Good day, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, we are moving on now to chapter six. And the writing's backwards because, you know, cameras and such. Uh, but chapter six, the journey from platform nine and three quarters. So if you remember from the previous chapter, Harry went and did all the school supply shopping, uh, which for me is my favorite type of shopping. Uh, I absolutely love it. August, beginning of September, my favorite time to go shopping. Uh, but so he did all his school supply shopping. He began to understand more fully just how famous he actually is, but he's getting concerned because he doesn't really know why he's that famous and he doesn't necessarily think he deserves it. Uh, and so now we turn to Harry's final time with the Dursleys for this year. Harry's last month with the Dursleys wasn't fun. True, Dudley was now so scared of Harry he wouldn't stay in the same room, while Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon didn't shut Harry in his cupboard, force him to do anything, or shout at him. In fact, they didn't speak to him at all. Half terrified, half furious, they acted as though any chair with Harry in it was simply empty. Although this was an improvement in many ways, it did become a bit depressing after a while. Harry kept to his room with his new owl for company. He had decided to call her Hedwig, a name he had found in a history of magic. His school, books, her school books were very interesting. He lay on his bed reading late into the night, Hedwig swooping in and out of the open window as she pleased. It was lucky that Aunt Petunia didn't come in to hover anymore, because Hedwig kept bringing back dead mice. Every night before he went to sleep, Harry ticked off another day on the piece of paper he had pinned to the wall, counting down to September the 1st. On the last day of August, he thought he'd better speak to his aunt and uncle about getting to King's Cross Station next day, so he went down to the living room where they were watching a quiz show on television. He cleared his throat to let them know he was there, and Dudley screamed and ran from the room. Er, Uncle Vernon? Uncle Vernon grunted to show he was listening. So when you grunt, it's like, mm. Remember, he's a big, beefy man, so probably he's more like, mm. Er, I need to be at King's Cross Station tomorrow to, to go to Hogwarts. Uncle Vernon grunted again. Oh. Would it be all right if you gave me a lift? Grunt. Oh. Harry supposed that meant yes. Thank you. He's about to go back upstairs when Uncle Vernon actually spoke. Funny way to get to a wizard's school, the train. Magic carpets all got punctures, have they? Harry didn't say anything. So this is where J.K. Rowling is emphasizing uh, the lack of magical knowledge from Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia. Uh, it's a stereotype that magic has magic carpets, um, and so he's making that joke there, that they all have holes in them so they're not able to fly. Where is this school anyway? I don't know, said Harry, realizing this for the first time. He pulled the ticket Hagrid had given him out of his pocket. I just have to take the train from platform nine and three quarters at eleven o'clock, he read. His aunt and uncle stared. Platform what? Nine and three quarters. Don't talk rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. There's no platform nine and three quarters. It's on my ticket. Barking, said Uncle Vernon. Howling mad, the lot of them. You'll see. You just wait. All right, we'll take you to King's Cross. We're going up to London tomorrow anyway, or I wouldn't bother. Why are you going to London? Harry asked, trying to keep things friendly. Taking Dudley to hospital, growled Uncle Vernon. Got to have that ruddy tail removed before he goes to smeltings. Harry woke at five o'clock the next morning and was too excited and nervous to go back to sleep. He got up and pulled on his jeans because he didn't want to walk into the station in his wizard's robes. He'd change on the train. He checked his Hogwarts list yet again to make sure he had everything he needed, saw that Hagrid was shut safely in her cage, and then paced the room, waiting for the Dursleys to get up. Two hours later, Harry's huge, heavy trunk had been loaded into the Dursleys' car, and Petunia had talked Dudley into sitting next to Harry, and they had set off. They reached King's Cross Station at half past ten. Uncle Vernon dumped Harry's trunk onto a trolley and wheeled it into the station for him. Harry thought this was strangely kind until Uncle Vernon stopped dead, facing the platforms with a nasty grin on his face.